again, everyone. I'm Chris Fernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city is exploring ways to develop facilities for the creative community, which is one of the top five sectors targeted for economic development. This week, executives from Art Space Projects are in Kansas City to visit local artist studios like those in the renovated Livestock Exchange Building in the West Bottoms. ArtSpace is also collaborating with the city by holding a town hall meeting and sharing ideas for developing affordable and sustainable ways to support the creative community. We're really looking at where are there neighborhoods or areas where a project like this might occur? What do the artists really want in Kansas City? So that's very important to us. How would a project like this get funded or financed? ArtSpace, headquartered in Minneapolis, also took a bus tour to help them conduct a community needs and use assessment. They are also learning about land bank properties that are available for renovation. The primary election for mayor and the city council were held this week. Last year, voters changed the city charter to move the primary election to April and the general election to June to increase voter turnout. For a complete list of the top finishers who will appear on the ballot June 23rd, visit kceb.org. Previously, the mayor and council would take office May 1st. Now they take office August 1st. The city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers for residents have reopened for the 2015 season. The centers provide residents with a place to recycle their yard waste and pick up free and or discounted mulch. The drop-off sites are located at 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Shoto Trafficway and 10301 Raytown Road. All three centers are open and free for residents to use on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Residents may also use the North Shoto Trafficway and North Main Street sites on Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 for a small fee. The Raytown site is only open on Saturdays. The city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 13th for South Zone residents. On your regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush at the curb. Central Zone collection will be on the week of April 20th, and North Zone pickup will be the week of April 27th. To double check the schedule, visit kcmo.gov and search for leaf and brush. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to tell you about the upcoming spring events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. On April 14th, more than 1,000 area students will converge on Bardo Hall for the iBuild Showcase, an annual event which brings students together for an opportunity to actively connect with industry professionals. This program demonstrates the wide array of careers that are connected to the construction industry, such as skilled craftsmen, architects, engineers, marketing consultants, accountants, construction managers, and more. Go to nice-kc.com for more information. The third day Soul on Fire tour with special guest Ellie Holcomb performs at the Music Hall on April 16th. Third Day is the recipient of four Grammys, 24 Dove Awards, and 30 number one radio singles with over 3 million albums sold. Purchase tickets online at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Need to see a doctor but can't afford the cost? On Saturday, April 18th, the National Association of Free and Charitable Clinics, together with the Kansas City Care Clinic, will be holding a one-day free medical clinic event for those in the area who have limited access to health care. While a walk-in will be seen on a limited first-come, first-served basis, patients are encouraged to call ahead and make an appointment for this clinic event. Call 800-340-1301 to schedule an appointment. Eat, drink, and feed many at the premier Kansas City food and wine tasting event. Forks and Corks 2015 will be held April 23rd in the Grand Ballroom of the Kansas City Convention Center from 6 to 9 p.m. Now in its 19th year, 
harvesters, Forks and Corks is an exciting evening featuring gourmet food and wine from more than 50 of Kansas City's finest restaurants and beverage purveyors. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Growing up, I, I always, my family was uh, always dealing with animals. We had a lot of animals in the house. We did a lot out in the wild and in nature. I started off uh, when I graduated from college, just like a lot of other folks back in the mid 90s. It was a tough, tough job search and uh, roofed houses and, and parked cars at the county fair until I found something uh, in the realm. So in the zoo world, I started as an aquarist, worked my way up to an assistant supervisor, then to a supervisor, assistant curator, curator, and then finally to a, uh, a director uh, position. But it certainly wasn't one step at a time as far as, okay, you do this and you get to this level, you do this and you get to that level. There was a lot of, a lot of energy put into it, but a, a lot of being in the right place at the right time too. Truth be told, I work less with the animals these days than what I used to. Uh, with my new role as the director, I am helping to make the decisions, but really the kudos goes out there to all the keepers who are, are doing the day-to-day -day work with the animals. But being in this profession, you get to do a lot of, a lot of things that other people couldn't, couldn't do. I, we were involved with raising up a, an orangutan and then being able to put it back with a surrogate mom. Those are the sort of things, those happy ending stories that you'll always cherish and you'll always remember and be able to tell those stories to other people about. Being a zookeeper involves being in the elements, so you're in really hot weather, you're in really cold weather, uh, a lot of sweat and toil and, and, uh, and lifting. Elephants go to the bathroom quite a bit, so uh, you're, you're scooping a lot of, a lot of feces if you don't want to uh, be dirty, then this is definitely not the, the job for you. But it brings a lot of satisfaction too. There's, there's a lot of fun involved. Um, like I said earlier, there's a lot of good memories, getting to work with a lot of unique animals. Um, some of these folks have, have been around uh, with the same animals for quite, quite some time. So you start to form a lot of bonds uh, with these animals that you work with. I'm Deb Churchill, property manager for the City Market. We're in the final phase of a $5 million bond project for the City Market improvements. We have been able to do projects that will benefit the customer as well as just the property as a whole in our infrastructure. Infrastructure improvements that we've done to the property is uh, both the roofs have been completely rehabbed and replaced and we have uh, installed all new windows on the property. Those uh, improvements will help us with our bottom line for budgetary purposes, for improvements to our uh, cost savings and just some less maintenance costs to the property. Additionally, we've done improvements that the customers will see. Uh, the sheds that we have for our farmers, we have three of them. We refer to them as pavilions. One was completed about seven years ago and we have two that are being completed now. Uh, they will have roof improvements, lighting, electrical, heating. The third pavilion improvements include enclosures with uh, glass doors, the heat, the lights, the electrical. And this allows us the opportunity to extend our season for our farmers. It allows them to grow produce year round that they can sell here year round. Our customers can come and buy local year round. It's great for everybody. The uh, project as a whole also includes two of our walkways in the courtyard here on the property that also will show improvements with new roofs and new lighting. These days, the trend is buy local. We encourage everybody to come down to the city market. This summer, one of our slogans is gonna be love your local market, and we'd love to see you here. Join us on Tuesday, April 14th at 11 a.m. as the city's fountains are turned back on for the season at the annual Fountain Day celebration. 
This year's celebration is extra special because the iconic J.C. Nichols Fountain returns to its prominent location after being renovated over the winter. The original Fourth Dolphin will make its Kansas City debut, and the Seville Light Fountain also returns after recent repairs. We'll see you on the 14th on the Plaza. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To watch this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.